We're going to talk about a book which has been released on a nostalgic series of adventures, mishaps and unique experiences. Uh, and it's about growing up in Gibraltar in the 80s. It's called The Commodore Sphere, A Journey Through Parallel Realities. And it sees loyal friends Alex, John and Michael go on a quest to travel through time. And uh, it's my pleasure to welcome the author into the studio now. Uh, Alex Capurro, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Jonathan. It's a pleasure. What, uh, what mm -hmm. an, uh, an exciting sort of theme to, to write <laughs> about. Um, uh, you, you like sci-fi? You, you sort of... You, yeah, you, absolutely. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a sci-fi geek, 100%. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, about myself? Okay. Well, um, obviously, I grew up in Gibraltar. Um, and I've always been uh, extremely interested in technology and gadgets and computers in general uh, since probably since I was four years old and I saw my first uh, Pong game. Uh, so, yeah, very much into sci-fi and technology, um, both personally and in, in my career. Well, let's talk a little bit um, uh, about your career, if you want. Um, sure. you, you've, uh, you, you built a, a pretty big fintech company in Gibraltar. Uh, which has then been acquired by one of the the biggest payment companies in the world. Um, tell us that story, which is, I mean, I remember when it happened. Yeah. Uh, and you know, we said we'd we'll, we'll catch up eventually, <laughs> but but it was massive. No? Yes. Um, well, I, I mean, I've been starting up various businesses, fintech related, since two thousand and seven. Uh, the last one I set up was Easy Payment Gateway, and that was in two thousand fourteen. Um, and basically, I developed a software that allowed you to draw on the screen a, a flow diagram. And in real time, that diagram would become the logic or the code behind how to process a transaction. Um, and that was patented worldwide. And during COVID, actually, I was approached by Global Payments, which is uh, one of the biggest, this in the Fortune 500 companies. And a long story short, they set up a joint venture with Geisha Bank from in Barcelona. Which we'd be familiar with. People who travel in Spain would have Absolutely, seen their, yeah. their sort of banks. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're actually, they, they process over a third, uh, almost two thirds of the whole volume of Spain. So jointly, they, they purchased the, the platform, the company that I set up. And, and since then, I've been working for them. I'm now the chief innovation officer for the company. And is it being used then more broadly? Yes, absolutely. I mean, uh, they use it now on a daily basis and they're processing in the region of six and a half billion euros a month through my software. That's amazing. Yeah. Good for you, man. Thank you. <laughs> but uh, but you, you've stayed on, you're, you're still involved? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, myself and the whole team that I had, we all stayed on because, um, I mean, we, we, we just, we enjoy working with the, with the software and, and the company. They, they offer very good benefits and it's just a really nice uh, place to be. Um, and I can work from home as well, which is great. I was going to say, so yeah. uh, is there an office base in Gibraltar? Is everybody sort of no, uh, working basically, from home nowadays? Yeah, we're working from home and I travel to Barcelona once or twice a month for like board meetings and whatnot, but it's predominantly from home. Okay, and, um, and and tell us a little bit about where we are with technology and, and the finance and banking sector. Uh, well, there's there's a lot going on with artificial intelligence right now um, from a, an authentication point of view. So, not you know, biometrics, authentication, so you don't have to put your chip and pin. Uh, the, the latest technology I've seen uh, with a credit card machine in a shop is authenticating with the pattern of veins from your hand. Really? Yeah. So you basically is that unique to each person as well? Absolutely, it is. Yes, yes. And the technology is so good that within milliseconds they can recognize the pattern of your hand, and thus authenticate the the transaction. So it's all about AI and pushing that. And is that because there's some kind of limits to the security of a fingerprint? Can a fingerprint be replicated? It yes. Some some, some extent, systems no? have been hacked, if you like. Whereas uh, it, the patterns of your vein are incredibly. D difficult to to you know to to mimic, and artificial intelligence. I mean, it's such a big talking point. Um, yeah. You know, the 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 natural sort of concern for people is that it'll mean that jobs that were being carried out by people uh, can be automated, and therefore those people won't be required anymore. As somebody who has led a team yeah. uh, successfully for for a number of years, um, is that the way you see it? No, not at all. In fact, uh, where I am right now, we did uh, some research and we looked at all the different departments and what they do. And we, what I found was that there were about 10,000 hours a month that are uh, used up in, in mundane uh, tasks. So, for example, there are many departments that receive an email that has an Excel and they have to open that Excel, extract data, copy it to another Excel or a PowerPoint or whatever. 
these are tasks that we can automate with AI. Um, and it means that those 10,000 hours can be then reinvested on other more important tasks. And that's happening now, or are we on the cusp of it? It is happening right now as we speak. Mm. Um, I've got stuff at home working for me as we speak, <laughs> basically. <laughs> And uh, do you share any concerns about AI and, and you know, yeah. how to keep it safe? Yeah. I mean, one of the things that I always say, I, I've given a few talks about AI, and what I always say is that we need to understand the risks and the limitations. And one of the most important things is that when you ask AI for help, uh, whether it's because you have a piece of text that you need to make more professional or you want to write an email or whatever it may be, even coding, you need to understand what it is you're asking it because the response it will give you might not be 100% correct. Uh, if you look at, for example, ChatGPT, which is the biggest, most popular one right now, yeah. Uh, if you use the free version, it's limited to knowledge of up to 2021. So, for example, if I ask it to make uh, to write a program for me, it will do it, but it may use frameworks or libraries that are deprecated. And so, if I don't know how to program, I think that what it gives me is correct, when in fact it's not the latest. Two years out of date. Yeah, exactly. On, based on a, on the free yeah. software. No, I mean, it's still pretty amazing, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. It? Yeah. I mean, it gives you, it's great for as, a, as a template or as a base, you know, and then you have to build on top. But you need the knowledge is what you're yes, saying. You, know, you, you need, you, to, you need Somebody to. without the knowledge couldn't just rely on, or, or if they relied exclusively on AI, they'd be, find, they'd be found out as yeah, cheating. Yeah, I mean, you, can, you or, can use it, perhaps if you're doing a demo or a proof of concept, that's fine. But if you want to take it to production, you really do need to understand what it is you're asking it, because then, yeah, you will be caught out, basically. And where are we with sort of um, bringing it on board? Uh, and to what extent might there be, um, you know, might we get burnt as a society for, you know, sort of not understanding the ways yeah. in which we bring it on well enough and therefore we bring it on and, and, and we, sh we, we sort of, it results in a, in a net loss, perhaps, or even if it's momentarily to, to the customers. And then you realize, oh, there was, you know, I, I exposed myself to, to a risk here. Yeah, well, that's already happened. You have companies like Microsoft and Samsung that have fully integrated ChatGPT into their, their, their platform, their environment, and that has led to leaks of, of, of internal private documentation and even code, which shouldn't have been leaked. So that's already given you an example of how things go, can go wrong. So now a lot of these companies are working on legislations and rules and laws about restrictions, because at the end of the day, we need to restrict uh, you know, what, you, what you can ask it and what it can return as a response. Well, I'm sorry, I'm focusing a lot on your <laughs> career because it's uh, it's very interesting, and also because I think there's a lot of overlap with your yeah. with your writing, no? Because mm -hmm. it's it's very much about technology and about imagining a future where technology does things which it doesn't at the moment, and then trying to take the 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 viewer or, or the company yeah. there, no? Absolutely. I mean, the 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 book Sorry, is actually the, the reader. But yeah, yeah the reader. Viewer, because I was thinking about your video as well, which we well, can yeah, talk but, about but, in a moment. But. Yes, I mean, the the book is actually the first in a series of three. So the first book, I tried to kind of set the scene, the premise, and introduce the characters and the technology. So the book is about the I call it the Compton Sphere, um, and I actually got the idea from uh, World War Two. The Nazis had something called the Dyke. I think I think I'm pronouncing it correctly. The Dyke Locker, which is also known as the Bell. The myth is around that, that they were using, or they were going to use it uh, as a time travel machine, okay? So um, I wanted to basically combine old technology from the 80s, hence why I use the Commodore 64 and yeah. the old Casio wristwatch uh, with that uh, advanced technology and kind of merge it all together and come up with a almost scientifically correct uh, method of traveling through time, basically. Well, that's a beautiful thing about um, sci-fi, sci you know, that it can um, sort of have this overlap with, yeah. with science fact Absolutely. as well. And, yeah. um, okay, so but it is science fiction. And, yes. and talking about artificial intelligence, you created a visual teaser, a, a video, uh, uh, where all the animations and images have been created by AI. Yeah, what I did, I mean, I, I'm a very visual person. So even when I'm coding something, I like to get a piece of paper and I break down the, pro the problem into, or whatever I'm doing into smaller chunks. And I, I like to draw flow diagrams and whatnot. So uh, when I was writing the story, I, w I needed to see it. Uh, so I decided to use Mid Journey, which is another bot like Leonardo, there's a few yep. of them, to create images based on what was in my head. Um, and then once I had the but, images... But, but you have to, again, you need to describe yeah, yeah, it very carefully yeah. in order to for, for mid-journey to be able to come up with something that looks good, For sure. Good, right? I mean, one other thing, that if you see an image in my trailer, what you don't see is that there perhaps there were 20 other iterations before that one. So once I had the images, then I used another AI tool um, to add depth to those images and, and movement. And then I used another tool to create the music, and then I basically used uh, you know, Premiere Pro to just put it all together into, into a trailer. 
Um, but it's basically images that have been added depth. Um, the second trailer I'm working on is 100% animated purely by AI. But there's no images, it's just pure animation. That's amazing. And, yeah. and that's just you, descri yeah. the, for somebody who hasn't tried to create anything on AI, you write down in words yes. what you're after. You write down in words, and once you have a, a, an image that you're happy with, you can then use that image as reference. Uh, or if you're creating animation, you can find online a clip or a movie or a scene that you like, and then you can use that clip as kind of like a reference. And you can tell the AI, look, I want you to build this uh, animation based on that scene. So it will kind of replicate the, the characters and the scenery and everything. But you have to be very descriptive. And the uh, the ability to generate um, AI video, is that's not something which is particularly mainstream at the moment. No, this is sort of uh, cutting edge yes, video Yes, I mean, software. there are a few people who, who create the odd Instagram and TikTok short clips, um, but it is actually being used in the movie industry uh, because, you know, originally people would act uh, in front of a green screen Whereas now uh, they can basically see themselves virtually in a virtual world that is rendered in real time, mm -hmm. so that it helps the the actor the actual acting yeah, process. Yeah, exactly. They don't have to imagine and... the dinosaur; they can actually see it virtually. You know, so that's, that's amazing. That's, uh, so, so I suppose what I'm saying is that Mid Journey, which you mentioned earlier, yeah. uh, can create uh, AI generated images. Yes. The AI generated video is not as readily available, or it is it's, literally also it's, it's, a, a, a software that you know I could download after yeah, the show. Yeah, there's a there's a tool called Kyber or Kyber. I'm not sure how it's pronounced. Um, that will, tool will produce images for videos for you, but it's limited to three seconds. So you need to be uh, accepted into the pro, if you like, list of sure. users, and then that will give you yeah. much more so, freedom. Okay, so it's coming. It's it's, it it's, it's, sure, main, sure. it's becoming yeah, more yeah. mainstream. Absolutely, that's so interesting. Um, okay, and, and let's uh, talk about the the narrative in your yeah. book. Then technology. You've talked about you know your your Casio and and your Commodore, uh, but it's also uh, in some respects a story about good old fashioned friendship. Absolutely. I mean, the, the book is based on. Well, myself and my friends, John and Michael, when you know, we grew up here in the 80s. So I talk a lot about the Alameda Gardens, the old Bishop Fitzgerald School. In fact, the, the, the discovery they make is supposedly under the old Bishop Fitzgerald School library. Uh, so they find a piece of rock, which looks like a purple glass, and they become obsessed with finding more of those pieces till eventually they build the sphere. And then Alex uh, happens to have an uncle who was a computer genius uh, and used to make video games for the Commodore 64. And I mean, those... The, those part of the stories are actually real. I do have an uncle called Morris who was a, a Commodore 64 uh, genius. And, no way. Yeah, yeah, and he taught me how to program. And my first game that I made when I was eight years old was with him, you know. So I tried to combine, you know, all that, all those real situations with this fantasy. And John um, and Michael are real friends as yeah, well. Yeah, Johnny Nadis and Michael Vaughn. Uh, no, no way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and, um, you know, a lot of the, again, a lot of these stories that I add to the book are actually based on real life. Uh, even the how I tried to build a time machine was based on an experiment that I did when I was 10. I almost burnt down my house doing it, but it was real. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Um, okay, uh, so if uh, if you've piqued somebody's interest in the Commodore Sphere, um, where can they find it? They can find it on Amazon. I've actually got a special deal where it's for, for $1.99. They can buy it for the Kindle or they can buy it for $9.99 for paper version. And also it's going to be sold at the uh, uh, here in Gibraltar. Um, at the uh, which bookshop are we talking about? The, he the, the Heritage, Heritage Bookshop. Heritage Trust, sorry, yeah. Heritage Trust. Uh, I went blank as well. Yeah, I, was, I went blank. <laughs> the uh, so Trust, at the John yeah. McIntosh Square. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, it's been a pleasure talking to you, and you, uh, and we we look forward to talking to you when your next book is out and next year and see <laughs> excellent and best of luck writing it. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Thank you, Alex Capurro.